Hello everyone and welcome to today's sixth grade ELA lesson. I have created a PowerPoint for today's lesson and it's going to be all about figurative language. Okay, so for our I can statement, which is kind of like our goal for the lesson, it's going to be I can identify and define different types of figurative language, similes, metaphors, hyperbole, and alliteration, as well as interpret meanings and context. So basically the goal of this lesson is to be able to know which type of these four figurative languages are in a passage, be able to define them, and be able to interpret their meanings within the context that they're given. So for our agenda today, first we're going to review some vocabulary. Next we'll have some practice identifying the four figures of speech. After that, you'll be able to create your own figures of speech. So you'll be able to create your own sentences with similes, metaphors, hyperbole, and alliteration. And finally, we will recap and conclude the lesson. So for today, you will need paper and pencil to complete the activities. To, so to start off with, we are going to go over some vocabulary. So figurative language in general is like a word or phrase that does not have its normal everyday literal meaning. So for example, similes make a comparison using the keywords like or as. So on your piece of paper, you can write simile, and it's spelled right here, and then a hyphen, comparison using like or as. So those are the keywords that you'll be looking for whenever we talk about similes. After that, you can write down the word metaphor. A metaphor is a comparison using the keyword is, or we could also say the keyword was. Usually it's going to be is though. So you can write on your piece of paper metaphor and then hyphen comparison using is. After that, our third vocabulary term is hyperbole, which is exaggeration. So you can write hyperbole on your piece of paper hyphen exaggeration. Then our last figurative language that we'll be talking about is alliteration, which means the same sounds or letters for multiple words. So that's alliteration. So you can write that down on your piece of paper and then write down the definition. Same sounds or letters for multiple words. And in the upcoming slides, I will be giving examples of these four types of speech. Okay, so first up is going to be similes. So a simile is going to make a comparison. It's going to show the similarities between two different things using like or as. Those are keywords, like or as. So for example, you were as brave as a lion. You were as brave as a lion. So it's comparing you to a lion, showing those similarities that both you were brave and the lion was also brave. So you were as brave as a lion. And again, notice as and as there. Or they fought like cats and dogs. So they are being compared to cats and dogs. And we have that keyword like, which shows that this is a simile. So like and as are going to be our keywords for similes. Next up for our figures of speech is a metaphor. So a metaphor describes an object or action that isn't like true in a literal sense, but it helps to explain an idea or to make a comparison. So a metaphor is going to state that one thing is another thing using is or was. For example, he is a shining star. It's comparing him to a star as in he is a shining star. So simile is going to use the words like or as, whereas metaphor use the word is or was. Next up is going to be hyperbole. And hyperbole is best to remember as exaggeration. So hyperbole is exaggerated statements or claims not meant to be taken literally. So for example, my backpack weighs a ton. So it can't be taken literally because a ton is 2,000 pounds, and that would be a very, very heavy backpack if a backpack weighed an entire 2,000 pounds. So this isn't quite meant to be taken in a literal sense, rather it's more of a figurative sense. So it's comparing a backpack as weighing a ton. My backpack weighs a ton is exaggerated. That's why it's hyperbole. Okay, so our fourth figure of speech is going to be alliteration, one of my personal favorites. So alliteration is the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of closely connected words. So for example, Sally swiftly skipped. We have it starting with the letter S for Sally, 
S for swiftly and S for skip. So you can see that that beginning letter is going to be the same when it comes to alliteration. So example, Sally swiftly skipped. So here I have some more examples of alliteration. This one's going to be alliteration with the letter W. And alliteration a lot of the time is actually used for tongue twisters. So for example, for this one, this one is going to use the alliteration with the letter W and it goes like this. If two witches were watching two watches, which witch would watch which watch? So you can see that almost all of these words, except for like if and were and to, they all start with a W. So witches, watches, which would watch which watch, those all are going to start with a W for alliteration. Okay, let's look at another one. So this one is going to be alliteration with the letter B. So Betty bought a bit of butter, but the butter Betty bought was bitter. So Betty bought a better butter and it was better than the butter Betty bought before. So that's kind of like another tongue twister. And we can see that this one also uses alliteration because it, a lot of these letters, a lot of these words start with the letter B. And so alliteration is repeating that same sound or letter over and over. So in this case, B is going to be repeated over and over because different, let, different words are going to start with the letter B. Okay, we have another one. This one is alliteration with the letter S. So we've got swan swam over the sea, swim, swan, swim, swan swam back again, well swam swan. So we can see that a bunch of these words are going to start with the letter S. So that's alliteration with the letter S because the beginning letter is S for most of these words. So that's alliteration. Okay, so to summarize our vocabulary, we have a simile is a comparison using like or as. And this is a good time to check your paper to make sure that you have all of the definitions copied correctly. So simile is a comparison using those keywords like or as. Then we have a metaphor, which is a comparison using is, is, the, key, is, is the keyword, as is was. Hyperbole, which is exaggeration. So exaggerated statements such as my backpack weighs a ton when it doesn't actually literally weigh 2,000 pounds. And then there's alliteration, which is the same sounds or letters for multiple words, such as swim, swan, swim. Those all start with an S. Okay, so now it is time for our activity of identifying the figures of speech. So we're going to do this first one together. So I'll read it. A good cook could cook as many cookies as a good cook who could cook cookies. And a hint is this is kind of like a tongue twister, kind of along the lines of a tongue twister. So our options are, is this a simile? Is it a metaphor? Is it an example of hyperbole? Or is it an example of alliteration? So if you said that this is an example of alliteration, you are correct. This one is alliteration using the letter C. So we can see that a lot of these words start with the letter C. Cook, could, cook, Cookies, cook, could, cook, cookies. They all start with that C, that letter C. That's why that's alliteration, because again, alliteration is the same beginning sound or letter in a bunch of words that are in one sentence. Okay, so now let's try another one. Identify this figure of speech. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. So is this a simile where it uses those keywords like or as, making it a comparison? Is it metaphor, which also makes a comparison, but uses that keywords is or was? Is it hyperbole, which is like exaggeration? Or is it alliteration, where a bunch of the words start with the same letter or sound? So which one do you think that it is? If you said hyperbole, you are correct. This is kind of like an exaggerated statement. Saying I'm so hungry I could eat a horse is exaggerated because it doesn't mean that you could literally eat a horse because this a horse is like so large. It's just more of a figure of speech. It's exaggeration, which is why this would be labeled as hyperbole. All right, next one. His explanation was as clear as mud. Again, his explanation was as clear as mud. So that kind of means that the explanation really wasn't that clear at all because mud is definitely not that clear. So is this sentence a simile, a metaphor, an example of hyperbole, or an example of alliteration? So to think about this one, we can see that it's comparing two things. It's comparing his explanation 
with mud. We also see our keywords as, so as clear as mud. So is it the simile or is it the metaphor that uses those keywords of as? If you said simile, you are correct. Similes use the keywords of like or as. So we could have also said his explanation was like mud or his explanation was as clear as mud. So again, comparing his explanation with mud. So it's a simile because it uses like or as, whereas metaphor will use is or was. Okay, next one. Laughter is the music of the soul. Which figure of speech would that be for laughter is the music of the soul? Would that be a simile, a metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? If you said metaphor, you are correct. That's because it uses that keyword is. This is also making a comparison. It's comparing laughter to the soul, but it uses that keyword is to connect the two. Laughter is the music of the soul. It's not saying laughter is like the music of the soul or laughter is similar to the music of the soul. It's saying no, laughter is the music of the soul. So that keyword is makes this a metaphor. All right, next one. He was taller than two towers put together. Again, he was taller than two towers put together. Is this an example of, and this one's actually gonna have two options, two answers, just giving you it in advance. So is it a simile, a metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? So for this one, I want you to write down on your piece of paper two answers out of the four figures of speech. So I'll be writing two out of four figures of speech for he was taller than two towers put together. So you can pause the video and do that. All right, so after you're all done with that, let's check your work. So this one is going to be an example of both hyperbole as well as alliteration. So remember that hyperbole is exaggeration. So saying he was taller than two towers put together is kind of an exaggeration because if you put two towers on top of each other, that would be like super, super tall, like way more than six or seven feet. And so it's not really the size of a human when you have two towers put together, it's way taller. So that's why this can't be taken in a literal sense, rather it's exaggerated. So it is an example of hyperbole. And it's also an example of alliteration because when we take a look at the first letters of a bunch of these words, we have T for taller, T for two, T for towers, and T for together. So taller, two, towers, together, all start with that same letter T. That's why this is an example of alliteration, and more specifically, alliteration with the letter T. Taller, two, towers, together, all have T in them. So this whole thing is going to be hyperbole as well as alliteration. Let's try another one. Identify the figure of speech for the following. I could sleep for a year. Is this an example of a simile, a metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? So if you said that this is an example of hyperbole, you are correct. It is an exaggeration because no one can actually sleep for an entire year unless it's like a fairy tale or fiction or make believe. No one in real life could actually sleep for an entire year, also unless they're in a coma, but we're talking about like regular situations. So saying I could sleep for a year isn't quite true because people will sleep for like anywhere from like six to 10 hours in a day, but not necessarily like a whole year, not even like a week, not a month, definitely not a year. Like it's kind of an exaggerated claim. So this is why that's hyperbole or exaggeration. All right, next one is life is a roller coaster. So not only is this a very philosophical statement, but it also has a figure of speech. It's either simile, a metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration. So what do you think it is for life is a roller coaster? If you said life is a roller coaster is a metaphor, you are correct. And something that clues us into this right away is the word is. Remember that metaphors have is or was, whereas similes have like or as. So it's comparing life to a roller coaster 
And the thing that connects it all together is that keyword is life is a roller coaster. So that's our metaphor. What about this one? He is a night owl. So that means that he kind of likes to stay up late at night getting his work done. He is a night owl. Is that going to be a simile, a metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? So if you said metaphor, you are indeed correct. Again, that keyword of is immediately clues us into this. Awesome job. What about this one? Watching the show was like watching grass grow. So in other words, it sounds like watching the show was kind of boring because it was so slow because they're comparing it to grass growing. So watching the show was like watching grass grow. Is this going to be a simile, metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration. If you said simile, you are correct. That's because we have this keyword like. So remember if we have like or as, that often means that it's gonna be a simile. It's comparing the show to watching grass grow. And it's saying that it's like watching grass grow. So it didn't say, it didn't use the terminology for a metaphor because metaphors is. So that'd be like saying watching the show is watching grass grow. Instead, it says like. Watching the show was like watching grass grow. So that's why it's going to be a simile. All right, identify this figure of speech. The snow is a white blanket. Is this going to be a simile, metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? If you said that it is a metaphor, you are correct. That's because we have that keyword is. The snow is, that's what's comparing it. The snow is a white blanket. So our connecting word is is, and it's connecting snow to white blanket. The snow is a white blanket. What about this one? She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Is this an example of a simile, a metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration. If you said alliteration, you are correct. So that's because a lot of our words, the majority of our words, start with the same first letter, in this case, S. She sells seashells and seashore all start with an S. So that's why that's alliteration. What about this one? Books are the keys to your imagination. So along with very wise and insightful words of wisdom, this is also going to be either a simile, metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration example. Again, books are the keys to your imagination. So which one, which part of speech do you think that this phrase is, this sentence is? If you said metaphor, you are correct. It's kind of defining through comparison. So books are being compared to imagination. The key connecting word is are. Books are the keys to your imagination. What about this one? I've told you a million times. Is this going to be a simile, metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? If you said it's hyperbole, you are correct. I've told you a million times, it's kind of like an exaggeration because it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to actually tell someone the same thing a million times, like one million times, that's a lot. So that's why it's exaggeration, so it's hyperbole. What about this one? The calm lake was a mirror. Is this going to be a simile, a metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? So this one will be a metaphor. It's comparing the lake to a mirror and it's doing so through the connecting word of was. So is, was, are, am, all of those present tense words, generally speaking, are going to point to a metaphor. So this is a metaphor. Calm lake compared to mirror using was as a key connecting word is a metaphor. What about the following? The wrestler was as strong as a tree trunk. So he's a super strong wrestler. Again, the wrestler was as strong as a tree trunk. Is this an example of a simile, 
a metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? This one will have two answers. So on your piece of paper, I'm going to have you write down the two answers that you think this is. You can pause the video if needed. The wrestler was as strong as a tree trunk. So if you said that this is an example of both a simile and hyperbole, you are correct. Let's look at the simile one first. So similes are going to use the keywords of either like or as, and we can see it has an as, as strong as a tree trunk. So it's comparing wrestler to a tree trunk using the connecting words as. So it's a simile. It's also hyperbole because it's exaggeration. A wrestler cannot actually be as strong as a tree trunk because a tree trunk like just doesn't move unless it's like chopped down, like it's super strong, super sturdy for like, we're imagining like a thick tree trunk, like one that's been there for years and years. So the wrestler was as strong as a tree trunk. It's kind of exaggeration because no human being can actually be as strong as a tree because trees are just stronger if they've been around for a long time. That is both a simile and hyperbole. All right, for our next one, it says the silk pillowcase felt as smooth as butter. All right, so is this an example of a simile, metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? If you said the census is an example of a simile, you are correct. We have those keywords as, comparing the pillowcase to butter, using that connecting words of as. The silk pillowcase felt as smooth as butter. So that's a simile. So we're now going to transition to a new activity. And so this is going to be our general outline for this activity. So basically, I'm going to provide a passage for you. And on your paper, I want you to write the correct underlined phrase for each figure of speech. So for now, on your piece of paper, I want you to write simile and then a hyphen. Skip a line and write metaphor, then a hyphen skip another line and write hyperbole and then a hyphen and skip the last or next line i guess and write alliteration with a hyphen so i'll let you pause the video and copy that down okay so after you're all done with that it's time for our first passage okay so I'll read the passage out loud to start off with. And while I'm reading, you're going to be looking at these underlined words and thinking, hmm, which of those underlined sentences are a simile? Which one is a metaphor? Which one's an example of hyperbole? And which is an example of alliteration? And don't worry, we will go over this first one together. It's going to be kind of like guided practice. OK, so let's read the passage. Seeing the sunrise was so satisfying, thought Melissa as she parked her car. She walked over to the enchanting lake, which shone like a mirror. For the next half hour, she walked around and around the lake until she finally sat down to rest, telling herself, I must have walked a hundred miles by now. Her exercise done for the day, she headed back to her car. Life is a great adventure, and I must make the most of it, she said, as she started to plan her next out-of-the-ordinary venture for tomorrow. Okay, so looking back at our passage, let's pay special attention to the underlined, underlined phrases or sentences. And then we're going to match them up with either a simile, metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration. Okay, so you won't have to write this first one down because I'm just going to model it, but for future examples, you will be using these four figures of speech that you just wrote on your paper. Okay, so seeing the sunrise was so satisfying. Is that an example of simile, a metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? Looking at this, we can see that a lot of our words start with that beginning letter of S. We've got seen, sunrise, so, and satisfying all start with that letter S. That clues us into the fact that this is alliteration. So we're gonna go seeing the sunrise was so satisfying, we'll make a mental note for this time that this is an example of alliteration. Okay, next underlined phrase. Actually, this one's a sentence. She walked over to the enchanting lake, which shone like a mirror. So since we're already done with our alliteration, 
Our three options left are hyperbole, metaphor, and simile. So she walked over to the enchanting lake, which shone like a mirror. So it seems like it's comparing lake with a mirror. And it gives us the keyword like. It says the enchanting lake, which shone like a mirror. So it's not going to be a metaphor because that uses is. And it's not quite exaggeration because a lake can shine and can reflect similar to a mirror. And it has the keyword of like, which clues us into the fact that this is going to be a simile because it's shown like a mirror. So mentally, you can make a note that she walked over to the enchanting lake was shown like a mirror would be an example of a simile. Okay, let's look at our next passage that's underlined. I must have walked a hundred miles by now. So for our two options left, which is simile and hyperbole, which category would this fall under? For I must have walked a hundred miles by now. If you said that's an example of hyperbole, you are correct, because that's an exaggeration. She couldn't have actually walked 100 miles by now. So it's exaggeration. She's just kind of exaggerating the circumstances, exaggerating how much she actually walked. So that would be our hyperbole, which means life is a great adventure, must be our metaphor. And we know that as well because we have our clue of the word is. Again, is, was, am, are, those are all cluing you into metaphors. Life is a great adventure would be our metaphor. Okay, and this just proves it. So she walked over to the enchanting lake which shown like a mirror. When we see like, it refers to a simile. Life is a great adventure. When we see is, that refers to a metaphor. I must have walked 100 miles by now is exaggeration, which means that it's an example of hyperbole. And seeing the sunrise was so satisfying is alliteration for the letter S, so that keeps repeating that letter S. So that's why it falls under the category of alliteration. Okay, so next passage. So you already have this on your piece of paper, hopefully, but just in case you don't, here is the spelling for it again. And so I'm going to provide you with a, a new passage. And for this one, you will write down the answers. Okay. Let's read it together. My backpack weighs a ton today, thought Maddie as, as he hoisted it onto his shoulder. His backpack had a lot of pockets and pouches, which meant it could hold a variety of items. My backpack is an extension of my jean pocket, Maddie had told his mom once, and he really wasn't wrong. His blue backpack boasted nine different pockets in all, and it was as handy as his wristwatch, which he never went a day without. His backpack and wristwatch were truly essential components of any day, in Maddie's opinion. So we're going to look back on our underlined words, phrases, sentences, just anything that's underlined, and we're going to match them up to whether it's a simile, metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration. And so we're going to do these one at a time together. Okay, so my backpack weighs a ton today. Do you think that falls under simile, metaphor, hyperbole, or alliteration? Once you choose your answer, you can write it down next to whichever figure of speech you think is the correct one. For my backpack weighs a ton today. So I'll let you pause the video and write that sentence right to the right, so right here, for whichever figure of speech you think that falls under. My backpack weighs a ton today. Okay, so if you said that that was hyperbole, you are correct. It's kind of like exaggeration. His backpack doesn't actually weigh 2,000 pounds because a ton is 2,000 pounds, so it's kind of exaggeration. Okay, what about this one? My backpack is an extension of my jean pocket. My backpack is an extension of my jean pocket. Does that fall under, since hyperbole is gone now, does that fall under simile, metaphor, or alliteration? for my backpack is an extension of my jean pocket. So you can write down your answer and pause the video as needed to write it down, to write down that sentence. So if you said that that's a metaphor, you are correct. Our keyword is clues us into that fact. It's comparing the backpack to the jean pocket and the connecting word is is. Okay. So we have hyperbole. No, we already did hyperbole. And we also found that this one was a metaphor for this one. So hyperbole for this one. 
and metaphor for this one. So now we have simile and alliteration left. Okay. His blue backpack boasted nine different pockets in all. Is that an example of a simile or an example of alliteration? If you said that this is an example of alliteration, you are correct. We have blue backpack boasted. So three times the letter B is used as the first letter in these three words, blue backpack and boasted. Awesome. Our last one is going to be alliteration, but it's always good to check. Or actually, no, that one was alliteration. Never mind. Our last one is going to be a simile, but let's check. So we've got it was as handy as his wristwatch. So right, right away we know that this is going to be a simile because it uses those keywords as it's comparing his backpack over here. His backpack was as handy as his wristwatch. So it's comparing backpack to wristwatch and it's using those connecting words as to connect it all together. So that would be what you would write under simile. It was as handy as his wristwatch. So I'll let you pause the video and do that. And this is what it looked like at the end. Awesome. Okay, so now it is time to create your own similes. We'll be creating our own figures of speech for all of these, but let's start with our similes. Okay, so you're going to choose three of the options that I'm about to give, and you'll create a simile for each option. So for example, if you have this option, if you choose this option, smile and bright as the sun, and you have to create a simile, then you know you're going to have to include either the words like or as in this. So for smile and bright as the sun, I'd create a simile by saying her smile is as bright as the sun. So again, her smile is as bright as the sun, or her smile is bright like the sun right like the sun so again similes can use either as or like so out of all six of these options you're going to choose three options and you're going to write down your three similes so again here's an example if you need it modeled for smile bright and sun we put her smile is as bright as the sun or her smile is bright like the sun so you're going to choose three options and write down your three similes so I'll let you pause the video Awesome. So this is what it could look like. If yours looks a little different, that's also fine. So for this first one, that cloud is as fluffy as cotton candy. So it's comparing the cloud to cotton candy using those linking words, connecting words of as. Then we also have for the second option, if you chose the second option, you get the snowflake sparkled like millions of tiny diamonds. So it's comparing the snowflake to diamonds using the connecting word like. Then we have, he is as angry as a grizzly bear. So this one I chose to use the connecting word as, and you're comparing him to a grizzly bear using that connecting word as. All right, next one. On her first day of school, she was as cool as a cucumber. We could have also said she was cool like a cucumber, but I thought that this one sounded a little better. So on her first day of school, she was as cool as a cucumber. As connects school, no, as connects she, to a cucumber. They're comparing her to a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber is like a good phrase. And then for this one, we're comparing Jake to an owl for how wise an owl is using the connecting word as when we say Jake is as wise as an owl. Finally, we have, we are like two peas in a pod where like is the connecting word. Okay, and if yours looked similar to this, that is also perfectly fine. Okay, so we created some similes. We were given our nouns and adjectives and things like that. And then we created our similes using either as or like. Now what we're going to do is create our own metaphors using those connecting words is, am, are, or was, all of those present tense and past tense. Okay, so we'll create our own metaphors. So it'll be basically the same thing, except you're going to use is or was, that kind of stuff. So for example, if you have been and walking dictionary, you know that you need to connect the word is to that one. So Ben is a walking dictionary. Is connects Ben and walking dictionary. Ben is a walking dictionary. That means that he kind of like knows a lot of words. He has a wide vocabulary. 
So we're going to be creating our own metaphors. So I'm going to have you choose three of these options. And you're going to write down your three metaphors. I'm going to let you pause the video. Remember to use that connecting word of is, or you could say was, whichever best suits it. Awesome. Okay, so let's take a look at our options. So this one is always going to use is or are. Okay, so we've got time and thief connecting the two is the word is. So time is a thief. Then connecting variety and spice of life, we've got variety is the spice of life. And that's a quote actually. And then she comparing to apple of my eye is she is the apple of my eye. And then this icing and cake, we've got this is the icing on the cake. Then comparing a voice to music, we would say Mary's voice is music to my ears. Notice that we're still including is. Then for this one, you are my sunshine. We wouldn't say you is my sunshine because that wouldn't be grammatically correct. So we say you are my sunshine. Awesome. So next, we're going to create your own sentences using hyperbole, so using exaggeration. And I'll give you kind of like a brief outline for how to do so. Okay, so for example, if I was to say boy and faster than a car, then to connect the two, we could say that boy runs faster than a car. So sometimes you may have to add a verb and that can be kind of cool to kind of tweak the phrasing to make it even more exaggerated. So this one's a really fun one. Okay, so you're gonna choose three options and you can kind of add your own words, whatever you think would sound really cool, to exaggerate this whole thing, meaning that can't really happen in real life. This is exaggerated. Just like in real life, a boy can't really run faster than a car if the car is going at like 65 miles per hour, for example. Okay, so you're going to choose three of these options and write down your three sentences that use hyperbole, the figure of speech called hyperbole, which is exaggeration. So I'll let you pause the video and do that. Awesome, so here are some examples. Your examples may look different and that's perfectly fine. Here are some examples of hyperbole or exaggeration. So, I must have walked a hundred miles that day. That's an exaggerated statement. Or, I've been waiting forever to get a copy of that book. Forever is what clues us into the fact that this is an exaggerated statement. Or, it's so hot outside that I could fry an egg on the sidewalk or that stack of books from the library is a mile high. Stack of books won't usually be a mile high because they would kind of topple over, I would think. Or his teeth are blinding white. Teeth don't actually blind someone, even if they are really white. So it's kind of just like a figure of speech almost. Or that book weighs a ton. The book probably doesn't quite weigh 2,000 pounds, so it shouldn't be taken in a literal sense. So those are some examples of what statements using hyperbole could look like. For our last but not least figure of speech, we have alliteration. So we're going to create your own sentences using alliteration. Okay, so for example, you're going to pick a letter such as G. You're going to make a three word sentence or you can make it longer as well. Please make it longer if you want to. And remember that each word must start with the letter you picked. So for example, if I pick G, and I make a three word sentence. It could be something like grace grows grapes. Notice that they all start with the letter G, because that was the letter that I chose. Now remember that a sentence is always going to contain both a noun and a verb. So a person, place, or thing, and then some sort of action. So grace grows grapes is an example of alliteration. Then if you want to, if you have time, you can also draw a picture to go with the sentence. So some other examples are using the letter L for alliteration, I could say, little Lucy likes lemons. Notice that this all starts with an L. Or for using the alliteration B, I could say, busy Bella bakes banana bread. Notice that all of these start with the letter B. So I'm gonna let you pause the video and make your own sentence using alliteration. Awesome, great job. Let's try another one. So we're gonna follow the same process, picking a letter, making a three or four or five or six word sentence, whatever you like, making sure it includes a noun and verb. And you can also, and this is optional, you can also draw a picture to go with the sentence. 
So as some, for some more examples, if I was to pick the letter G, I could say green grass grew gently. They all start with the letter G. And the reason I didn't underline this one is that it didn't really make the same sound, but it does have the same letter. So that counts too. You can have it either making the same sound or you can have it making the same letter. Either way is fine. Then using the alliteration of the letter T, Tim the turtle turned. That could be another example of alliteration. So I'll let you pause the video and write your second sentence that uses a different letter for alliteration. All right, and now we're going to do the same thing with one more. So you're going to pick a letter, make a three or four word sentence, and if you want to, you can draw a picture to go with the sentence. So for some more examples, if I was using alliteration for the letter C, I could say, Carrie caught Carl's camera. Notice that they all start with the letter C. Or if I wanted to do alliteration with the letter B, I could say, the ball barely bounced back. Now notice that the entire sentence doesn't always need to start with letters that have B. For example, I started this one with the. As long as the majority of words in the sentence, so most of the words in the sentence have to start with that same letter in order for it to be counted as alliteration. So ball barely bounced back, I'll start with that letter B. That's why this sentence is going to use alliteration. So I'll let you pick a letter, make a three or four word sentence, and pause the video to do all of that. Awesome. Okay. This was a very productive lesson. We were able to identify and define the different types of figurative language, namely similes, which means like or as, metaphor, which uses is or was, hyperbole, which is exaggeration, and alliteration, which uses the same letter at the beginning of multiple words. And we're also able to interpret these meanings in context. So to review our vocabulary, we talked about figurative language, which is a word or phrase that does not have its normal everyday literal meaning, so it can't be taken literally. Then we talked about similes, which are comparisons using like or as. Then we talked about metaphors, which are comparisons using is or was or are or am, that kind of thing. We talked about hyperboles, which is like exaggerated talk, such as this backpack weighs a ton, or I walked a thousand miles, or things like that. And then we also have alliteration, which is the same sounds or letters for multiple words, such as the ball barely bounced back, that kind of thing. So we reviewed our vocabulary. We identified the four figures of speech, we created our own figures of speech, so our own sentences for similes, metaphors, hyperbole, and alliteration. And finally, we recapped the lesson. So I hope that you enjoyed today's sixth grade ELA lesson on the figures of speech. I know that I certainly did, and I will see you later. Have a great rest of your day.